Hello and welcome to the Monday Market Update with me, David Madden. Today's date is Monday the 9th of July 2018 and the time has just gone 12.03 for the summer time. Uh, the big news over the last 72 hours has been that David Davis, the British, uh, the, well, the former um, Secretary of Brexit, has resigned. Uh, this has been a major political story, but in terms of the financial markets, hasn't really, hasn't really been a major story. We did see a sell-off in, in the British pound around midnight last night when the announcement was made. Uh, but this morning, the, the British pound is actually higher against the US dollar, but still remains a bit lower against the euro. Uh, like, like I said, it's a major political story. Uh, for the time being, there hasn't been a major reaction from the financial markets, although it clearly does undermine Theresa May's uh, prime ministership. Uh, and there's already kind of speculation, is there going to be a, a, a leadership challenge? Uh, and it should we should we go down that road, we could see increased, certain, uh, increased uh, political certainty, which could lead to... Um, pressure being applied to the pound but for the time being starting is, is, uh, is reasonably steady. Uh, taking a look at uh, European equity markets here we can clearly see that European equity markets have been are in fairly good shape because um, essentially we had a, a very strong session in Asia overnight and it appeared that the sell-off we saw uh, particularly in Asian equities uh, in the past few weeks on the run-up to the both sets of tariffs on the on Chinese goods and American goods to the tune of 34 billion dollars, which which came into a, which came into a, in implementation on Friday, just gone. It would appear that that, that sell-off was actually a bit overdone. So we saw a solid finish in Asia overnight, and that's that's trickled through to the a fairly good start uh, to Europe today. It's also worth pointing out that the um, middle of the road are reasonably good. Uh, Non-farm payrolls figures from the United States uh, last Friday is also adding to the bullish sentiment. But it, it is worth noting that the trade standoff between the United States and Wash and uh, and China, it, um, if anything, it's actually got it's actually gotten worse. Uh, so wh whether this positive sentiment could, will will last for much longer still remains to be seen because tensions are actually are clearly higher now than they were a few days ago. Although the, the financial markets would reflect that. Uh, take a look at the week ahead. Uh, the week ahead article can be found on our website. Go to cmcmarkets.com and under news and analysis, you will find the week ahead. You'll find the article with, uh, and you'll find you find the various articles that we do on a daily basis. Uh, under the news and analysis section here, you can find the week ahead article, which is published last Friday. Looking ahead to tomorrow, Arcado, the online grocer, have first half figures coming out. On Tuesday, also tomorrow, uh, we have Chinese CPI, and on Friday we have Chinese trade figures. So anyone trading uh, the Australian dollar, high-grade copper, or any of the mining companies, uh, keep please keep an eye out, out for both sets of, of these figures. On Wednesday, we have the Bank of Canada rate decision, uh, and the consensus is that we're going to see a rate hike from 0.1.25% to 1.5%. On Wednesday, uh, Microfocus, a British company, has first half numbers coming out. And on Friday, we have second quarter earnings from JP Morgan, Citigroup and Wells Fargo. So the major US banks kick off early season. Take a quick look now at some of the popular markets, starting off with the FTSE 100. Like I was saying, European equity markets are, 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 uh, are, are higher today and we are expecting higher open for US index futures. As we can see here... Um, after a very good run between March and May, you have seen a bit of a downward move uh, in, in, the, in the FTSE 100, um, but we actually have, have been pushing higher again recently. And notice how, as the market's been pushing higher, uh, turning our attention to the MACD indicator and MACD histogram, we can see there's a steady decline in negative momentum. So the market's pushing higher, the negative momentum is, is, coming, is coming to it, is, is declining, could come to an end. We could see the market push, continue to push on higher, and if it does, we could tick off these levels here, which come into play at 7,700. And if we go north of 7,700, the next area to keep an eye out for will be the uh, mid-June high of 7,794. Any moves to the downside may find some support in around this area here at 7,482. And below that, uh, support may come into play at this uh, yellow line here at the 100-day moving average, which comes into play at 7,422. Take a look now at the euro market, the DAX. We can see here that after a fairly sizable sell-off uh, in uh, in mid in, in mid June to to late June, we have seen a bit of a correction, uh, a bit of a bounce back in the in the DAX. We can see that this area here is actually has a very decent area of support, 12,123. This area here, the market's been pushing higher. We've seen a steady decrease in negative momentum, has actually now swung to positive momentum. So as the market's pushing higher. 
we're starting to see signs of positive momentum increasing. So the momentum is with the buyers. And if we do continue to push on from here, higher from here, we could be looking at targeting this area here, 12,600. And notice how 12,600 acted as both support and resistance in recent weeks. And if an area has acted as both support and resistance recently, it makes it all the more likely it will do, do so again in the near future. And if you manage to take out 12,600, we could be looking heading back up towards this red line here, the truth moving average, which comes into play at 12,782. Once again, it acted as both support and resistance recently, therefore makes it more likely we could see it act as support and resistance in the near term. Moving to the downside, uh, and the DAX may find some support in around this area here. A lot of consolidation just north of uh, 12,250, 12,300, that, that sort of area. And if it drifts off the south of there, we could be looking heading back down towards this area here, uh, 12,123. Take a look now at what's going on in, in the US with the Dow Jones. <coughs> so the Dow Jones obviously had a had a fairly uh, had a fairly negative uh, finish to, um, to to the month of June and also the early July. But as you can see here, um, the, the market managed to kind of hold north of 24,000. So more importantly, it managed to hold north of this trend line support here, uh, which, which, which would come into play and it drifted down to there in around 23,875 or 23,900. That's sort of an area. So we managed to hold above there. Now we've actually managed to, t to push higher, uh, push above um, the, the 30 day moving average, this red line here. And if you can manage to hold above the 30 day moving average at 24,000, 442 the likely is the likely is we could see the market continue to, to drive up from here and tar retest 25,000 if we go beyond 25,000 we could be looking at targeting this area here um, the, the kind of the mid-june high of 24,000 sorry 25,442 it's only if you see a, a size would break south of, of 24,000 could we be heading back down towards 20 23,900 or 23,000 875 this trend line here and if you go below that we could be looking heading back down towards the January low of 23,128 take a look now at what's been going on with the oil market so Brent crude oil um, has managed to after a fairly sizable sell-off in, in late June has managed to retake the 50 day moving average this blue line here notice how it actually did act as support on a couple of occasions recently and while we hold north of the, of the 50 day moving average which comes into play at 76 plus 79 the likelihood is that we could see the oil market push higher from here and we could look at look at targeting 80 dollars a barrel or north of that up towards 80 spot 89 and then beyond that up towards 81 spot 53 and he moves to the downside. If you do manage to drop below 76 spot 92, it could head back down towards $75 a barrel. And if you go below south 75, we could be looking heading back down towards 72 spot 38. Turning attention now to WTI. WTI has obviously had the, had the better run recently. It's uh, created a new multi-year multi high uh, only, uh, only at, at the beginning of this month. So. WTI has been the outperformer compared to Brent, and a similar, similar situation here is that it's in it still remains in its its upward trend. If we, continue, if we continue to push on higher from here, we could be looking at retesting 75, and if we go beyond 75 dollars a barrel on WTI, we could be looking at the say 76 and 77, maybe the next big psychological numbers to watch out for. Any move to the downside on WTI may find some support in around this area, which comes into play in around 72 spot 79 or 72 spot 50. And so if you, if you have a size of break below that, we could be looking any back up down towards this area here, uh, 70 spot, spot 70, or, or indeed $70 a barrel itself. Take a look now at a couple of the currency pairs, starting off with the euro dollar. So the euro has been losing ground versus the US dollar uh, for a number of months since, since April, but notice how it's managed to find, find a decent area of support in around this area here which comes into play at 1 spot 15.10 and we have been pushing higher here and in the last few sessions we managed to be getting some ground on the euro versus the US dollar there's been a steady increase in positive momentum on the market indicator so the market's moving upwards the momentum is clearly with, with, with the buyers so we could we could see this positive move extend and if we do continue to push on higher from here we could be looking at the this, this area here at 1 spot 18.50 sorry 1 spot 18.51 that area there and if you go north of that, we could be like getting back up towards 120.
and he moves to the downside, could find some support coming to play in this area here at 1 spot 15 10. And if he goes south to 1 spot 15 10, that would be that will, that will be a, 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 a quite a bearish sign because we would have traded a multi month low then. I mean, we, 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 would looking, we would look at heading back down towards the 114 area. And to finish things up, looking at the pound versus the US dollar, it's a fairly similar looking chart in that pound has also been losing ground versus the US dollar since April. But we have in, in recent sessions seen the, seen the pound push higher. Similar again, the pound is pushing higher recently. We've seen a steady increase in, in positive momentum, so we could see this uh, this this, uh, this this bounce back continue. If it did manage to push on higher from here, we could be looking at tar targeting uh, the early June high of one spot 34.72. And if we go beyond that, we could be looking at targeting this red line here, which comes into play, the trending moving average, which comes into play at one spot 35.86. And it moves to the downside, may find support in around the 132 spot 50 area. And if we go south of that, we could be looking at, at uh, retesting uh, the, the the June low of 1 spot 30, 1, 1 spot 30, uh, 49. And if we go south of there, we could be looking heading back down towards 1 spot 30, the figure itself. Well, that's all for me this week. Thank you very much.